guys, it's Chris Weatherman here again. It's Rebel Dispatch, and still got Charlie here today. Yeah. We have to we have to work him like a slave when he shows up because yeah, it, yeah, you know. Who do I report this to? <laughs> the IRS. That's who you report this to. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> not so much interested in that now. All of a sudden, yeah, it's not on the top of my list of things to do. But we wanted, to, we wanted to talk to you guys about something. Uh, if you guys are a fan of fiction, a lot of you are, and if you've read any of Franklin Horton's books, he, in one of his books, um, one of the characters goes to the safe and takes out the big red binder. Mm -hmm. And that's the, uh, what, what exactly, did, how do you phrase it? I call it the family contingency binder. There we go. So family contingency binder. And, and basically it's a list of, of a check, checklist, for lack of a better word. Here's the things we're going to do and it, how we're going to do them. It's a, it's filled. It's a checklist that is filled with items. So, and it, it, it for for today's discussion, it'll serve two purposes. Yeah. One, it'll have all of your family's critical documents. Yes. And then the second purpose, which we'll dig into that. The second purpose is you can add on to it and add on to do measures or emergency yeah. measures or how to manuals yeah. or information to in contingency plan form. Right. So that's, and that's why I call it the contingency manual. It actually came from one of my businesses. We had a business contingency manual. Pull it out, it had all the material safety data, safety data sheets, it had the emergency plans. If a fire breaks out, you do this. And I took that and I went home and I started in the old days creating that where I put photocopies of all Driver's licenses, birth certificates, birth certificates passports, passports credit photos of the credit cards front and back, everything that was in my wallet, everything that's in you know Mama's purse. Yeah. And if I lost my wallet and I'm like, what credit cards was I carrying? All I have to do is open up the book, and I'll say, here's all my cards. And because I took a photocopy of the back of the card, there's the phone numbers to call if I lost a card. Yeah. So I don't have to. It's a super easy way to take care of that. I've also put in, you know, insurance policies, mm -hmm. everything that you consider a critical document that you'd have to go stand in a line somewhere to, to, to get yeah. in, and uh, you put it all in there. And you can also make a digital version of that and put it on a, uh, a nice secure flash drive and you can throw it in your pocket if you ever needed to go somewhere. If yeah, you just evacuated. Yeah, just secure the flash drive. And that's easy to do, yeah. you can Google that. But that's a good idea too, putting it on a flash drive, having it in mm -hmm. more than one place. And it'd be a good idea too, you could store multiple copies of those in various places. Mm -hmm. Say your parents' house, your yep. brother's house, your wife's yeah. sister or wherever. And you can encrypt them or yeah. get the waterproof ones or whatever yeah. you want to do. Or with all that. the above, encrypted yeah. waterproof, that'd be mm -hmm. good too. But you know, having all that stuff in one place is a good idea. And two, it, you know, whoever's taking the lead in, in, the, in the prepping in your house, and I'm not gonna say the guys, because it's not only the guys. There's a lot of women that mm -hmm. I talk to that reach out to me because of my books, how they are, their husbands don't take it serious, aren't involved, and the oh, ladies yeah. are doing it. It's actually the bigger, I find that the ladies are the bigger demographic in prepping than the guys are in many cases. In a lot of cases. The guys yeah. are there for the guns and the gear. Um, the ladies are always there for the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, Yeah, basically they're the protectors of the family, the organizers. Yeah. You know, and getting the food and things like that ready. Mm -hmm. But having that binder in one place too, like we were talking about, if if I wasn't home and something happened, you know, having instructions in there for my wife of how to start the tractor up, how to get the generator out, mm -hmm. all the steps to go through before hooking the generator up, because it's not so simple as just plugging mm -hmm. that thing in, mm -hmm. the starting process of the generator, all that stuff, having yeah. it all written Making down. Making sure that the, the main power breaker on the house is shut off so you're not back feeding the grid. to a pole where you got some guy standing on a pole trying to repair the grid. Yeah. Well, you, when people talk about that, that, that yeah. that's a bit of a misnomer. It can be, but if you've got a 5 kW generator and you hook yeah. it to the power grid, it's probably not going to run long. It's going to overload was, the shit I out I was of teaching it. a CERT class last night and one of those guys was a lineman. He says a 5 kW generator will actually run 20 miles down a, down a high tension line. Absolutely. And they'll feel it. It'll, it'll toss them off the line. It will. But you also have to think of all the transformers that are hanging between you and there, mm -hmm. and all those houses that have their main breakers still on. Mm -hmm. You're trying to power all of them with a 5K generator. Well, you're sending a, you're sending a current through. And it's you're gonna, sending a current yeah. through, yeah. So, so yeah, you definitely want to open up mains and things like that. But but having those instructions That's for people that there you go that don't do that. Yeah. You know, I'm the guy at my house that does it. But if I'm not home, you know, I need to have mm -hmm. that typed out in a binder that my yeah. wife can grab take out and start flipping it, through. It comes back to business continuity, just like you would do for a business if something were to go wrong or a key member of your business 
died or whatever. Whatever, yeah. You know, the business can continue to run. Well, that same thing was family continuity. Yes. Is the same thing. How do I do these things? I never did this before. Where are the insurance policies? How do I file a claim? You know, all of the information that maybe one member of the family always just took care of and the rest of them kind of went along with it. Now they find themselves in that position where they don't even know where to start. Yeah, no idea where to and look. And especially if you have like a grandparents, elderly parents that are like, you know, do they have their affairs in order? All that stuff should be in your binder. Yeah. So this is not just about a natural disaster or terrorism or something. This is about a family disruption where you need to access the paperwork. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you were to have a, you know, if a spouse was to, to, to pass, yeah. do you know where the life insurance policies are? Exactly. Do you know mm -hmm. PIN numbers and passwords all to various All the passwords things? to all the apps and computers and yeah. laptops and bank accounts. And, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, your your mortgage, you know. all of that information, if it's all just collected in one place, then it's 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 in one place. And, and if you can put that in a safe, yeah. that's a great place, that's a great thing to do. Great place to keep it. And that way too, should you have to evacuate, we always talk about, you know, potential of having to bug yeah. out, you know. Yeah. And it can be for anything, forest Wildfire, fires, yeah. chemical spills, train derailments, whatever. Mm -hmm. But to be able to grab that book, yep. And at least have that information that, you know, your entire house could burn down, but when you come back, at least you still have this stuff. Yeah. And that, that is going to be, I've got a three-inch binder that is slapped full of documentation. Yeah. So it's going to be a big binder full of stuff broken out into categories. Mm -hmm. And if you just put that into some sort of a briefcase type of pouch, yeah. so when you grab it and take off out into the rain or something, it stays, all the pages are not blowing down the street. Yeah. And well, you know, put you can get the page protectors and slide stuff sure. in there, protect it. But yeah, you know, set it up mm -hmm. for adverse conditions for sure. Yep. But that's something that everybody should have. You know, if you guys don't have Everyone. it yet, that's a simple project that you can get started on. Um, and include the people that don't typically do the things that we're putting in this book. Include them in yep. the preparation of that. Yep. So they understand exactly what's in there and what it's about. And they're aware that it exists. And where to find it. For their benefit and where to find it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I did that. And I put the combination to my my gun safe in it. Mm -hmm. And then I put the book you in did my that? gun safe. I don't know. You want her to know that? No, I put the, com oh. I put the book in the gun safe. <laughs> oh, so okay, yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, but make you know, make sure everybody knows where it's at, and, and it's a family plan, you know. Er, you know, so mm -hmm. everybody should be involved. Yep, all ages. Well, that's the key with any plan. Don't just create a plan in a vacuum, and and that's where a lot of em emergency management, like cities and municipalities, go wrong. Is they develop a plan and then they throw it on a shelf and they never rehearse it. They never update it annually. Yeah, they don't tell anybody what the plan is. And now when a hurricane comes through or a flood, they pull out this plan and blow the dust off of it and is no longer relevant. Right. And if, if you change cards or get new cards that are updated for your you know credit cards or debit cards, add that into the document. Add, just throw a photocopy in there, throw it on your printer, take a copy front and back and throw it on the page or be done with it. Yeah. So <clears throat> another good thing to stick in there, you know, because we're talking about this, this isn't always for the end of the world stuff. Yeah. Um, serial numbers to uh, valuable property. Oh yeah, Absolutely. firearms. You know, any kind of electronics you have mm -hmm. that are worth a lot of money. Make model serial number. Put it proof, in there. And it's proof in the that you had it. Proof for that you claims. Had it. Exactly. So just another yeah. worth mentioning thing. There. Yeah, and uh, you can you can even take your uh, phone and walk around the house and just do a video of the house. Yep. And then you can just save that video to a file. Throw that on, on a, the flash on a drive. Flash drive. Mm -hmm. And then throw that flash drive and just clip it to the binder rings in yep. there. Uh, if you have a storm coming, like the hurricanes we were just talking about. Before the hurricane gets there, videotape everything in your house yeah. so that when you go to make the claim later on, you can show, yes, I made an effort to protect my home. You show the shutters being up. You show that you tried to pack things yeah. up. And if you made an effort, you'll have a better time getting a claim done. Yeah, yeah and, and they can't come back, too, and say, well, that hole looks like it was already there in your yeah. roof, you know, mm -hmm. which can happen, too. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, but again, so this thing has a lot of purposes. It's not just for end of the world kind of thing. Um, really, at the end of the world, these won't be much useful to you. But what they are for is the more likely personal emergencies, guys. That's the thing we preach because you're far more likely to have the, your, your, your personal world end before the whole collective sure. world does. Yeah, if, if you lose your wallet or your wife loses your, her purse, you know what was in it. You open yeah. it up, you get all new credit cards, you shut them down right away. Yep. If you had a car accident and you needed to get the insurance for the hospital and you couldn't find your insurance card in your wallet or it was outdated, Copy right in there, pull it out, just right to the hospital, and you're all yeah. set. You're not, don't get any delays. So if you guys don't have one of these, get to work on one, get it put together, do it as a family. And by that, I mean, you know, your spouse and older children. 
mm -hmm. uh, who who can handle this kind of information. And they you know what, child ID kits for your small children. If you yeah. you know their fingerprints, their hair, Pictures, for DNA, the whole thing, photo, yeah. current photographs of them. So if anything ever did happen, you could pull it out and say. Here's a, here's a com uh, recent picture that we had. Yep. Here's All their fingerprints. Here's yep. their dental records even. Yeah. yeah. All of that stuff so. for sure. So remember, high frequency events. This is what we want to prepare for. Yeah. The things that are going to happen mm -hmm. that we know are going to happen. Yeah. And I, what we'd like for you to do is throw in the comments sections, what would you recommend that you put in your binders? Let's see what you've got. Now, I don't want to see your, your binders, but I want to see what are your ideas. Give me a list of documentation that you think is important or something else that maybe we miss. Yeah, because, you know, we, we try hard, but we don't get everything, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why this is a community. That's why we bring guys like Charlie in. You know, Charlie doesn't like to his own horn, but he is a subject matter expert on a broad, broad variety of things, especially in EOC and that sort of stuff. Um, and it's ideas like this that some of you probably haven't thought of, but it's something yep. you can do. It don't cost you any money. Not at all. And, and, and it could really make the difference uh, in a crisis. So It will. All right, guys. Till next time. Get your binders done, and we'll see you on the next one.